What's going on everyone? This is Jay Patel and in this video we will understand what is the neural network. To understand the working of a neural network, let us understand the working of the human brain first. Now the human brain has billions of neurons and trillions of connections between these neurons. With the help of this network of neurons, it always tries to recognize patterns in anything we see or experience. Let's say a baby is learning about the fruits. At first, it does not know about any kind of fruit, but if he sees an image of a fruit, let's say apple, for a certain number of times, its brain starts forming patterns inside, which helps to recognize the apple next time he sees it. Similarly, the artificial neural network works. We feed a set of input data and based on this input data, the network tries to recognize patterns in it and makes an output prediction for the new data. For example, if we pass a bunch of images of apple and oranges, this network will try to recognize patterns in these images and based on this pattern stored, it will make the new predictions with the image it has never seen before. Now, let us understand what is a single neuron. A neurons are the function that gives some output value. Uh, this output value can be anything, but it's usually small and between 0 to 1. You can think of the neuron as something that stores a value between 0 to 1. It can be the simplest explanation of a neuron. Now, different neurons stores different values in them, and these different values are responsible for recognizing different patterns at the different region. For example, there may be some neurons which hold some numbers that are responsible for recognizing the red color in an image of an apple. And there may be some other neurons for recognizing the orange color in the image of an apple. So you can say that when we feed an image of an apple, some neurons get activated and when we feed an image of an orange, some other neurons will get activated. It's similar to what happens inside a human brain. When we see something that we like, some neurons get activated and when we see something that we don't like, some other neurons get activated. Now, due to these activations of neurons, we can also call these neurons as activations. And as these are the functions, we can call them activation functions. Now, the collection of these neurons forms layers. A neural network is divided into three types of layers. The input layer, the hidden layer, and the output layer. The input layer has the neurons which holds the value from the data set. So the number of neurons in the input layer will be equal to the number of features we have in our input data. Let's say our image of an apple is of the size 28 pixels into 28 pixels and the color schema that we are using is RGB. Thus each pixel will store three values of red, blue and green each. Thus the total number of features in this will be 28 into 28 into 3 which will be 2352 and thus the total number of neurons in the input layer will be 2352. Each, hold, each neuron holding the color value of every pixel. Now, as our final output can only be an apple or an orange, thus the output layer will have only one neuron, which holds a value between 0 to 1, showing the probability of an image being an apple or an orange. If the value comes out to be greater than 0.5, then we will classify it as an apple. If the value comes out to be less than 0.5, then we will classify it as an orange. Now it brings us to the hidden layers. The hidden layers are responsible for holding the patterns in them. It is possible here that our first layer is responsible for finding the shape of the content of the image. And as you can see, the shape of both apple and orange are slightly different from each other. And the second layer might be recognizing the colors in the central region. And some neurons will be activated for red color while the other with the orange. Now, the question is, how many neurons should a layer be having and how many layers should we be using? Can we have three or let's say five layers as our hidden layers? The answer is, it depends on our choice. We can keep as much as we want and as much as it requires for our application. With the data set of an apple and the oranges, we don't have a lot of information to recognize. Thus, we can keep only one hidden layer with only few neurons or we can also keep two hidden layers. But if our job is to classify whether the image is a cat or a dog, then there may be many features involved here and thus we can keep more number of neurons in each hidden layer and more number of hidden layers as well. Also, one more thing to note here is that the more the number of neurons and more the number of layers, larger will be our calculation, thus it will take more time to train our model. 
So if we can make our model with few neurons and few layers, then we need not use more number of layers. Now you understood about neurons and the layers. Now let us talk about the connections between every pair of neurons. There is one connection between every two pair of the neurons and we assign a weight value to every pair of the two neurons. This weight value is nothing but the parameter that we train. And we call them weights because they determine how much weight should we be putting or how much emphasis should be given to a certain region or certain patterns that we are recognizing. This can be done by taking a weighted sum. Now a weighted sum is when we multiply every weight within every value of the neuron and take its sum. Let's say this neuron is responsible for recognizing the color in the central region of the image. Now our weighted sum will be high if the color in the central region of the image is red. Thus our network will be confident about having the presence of an apple in the image instead of an orange. Now we also need to add another parameter called bias. This bias value determines how high a weighted sum should be. If the B value, the bias value is negative, then our weighted sum will be less. But if this value is high positive number, then our weighted sum will be high. Now, do you remember I talked about the activation functions? Now, this weighted sum is then passed to the activation function, which gives a proper output value, a single small output value. And this output value only gives the existence of a neuron. So A21 will be the output value after passing the weighted sum to the activation function. It is also good to notice here that these neurons will again be multiplied with the weights to calculate the weighted sum for the next layer and the process will be repeated until and eventually we generate the final output prediction, which will be A3 in our case. Now we can ask a question here and that is, we know that we get the value of the neurons by taking the weighted sum and passing it in an activation function. But then how do we get the values of these weights? The worst thing to do is to set all these weights manually and that would be a really hectic job and that's is not a correct approach. So what we do is that we first initialize random values to these weights and then we train our model and after the model is trained it will automatically change the values of the weight to give the proper output prediction. And in the next video we will find out the exact way how it's done. So this was about the neural network. And before you go, if you found this video helpful, then make sure to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload next machine learning video. And in the upcoming videos in this series, we will completely understand the neural network and we will implement the whole neural network in the Python. So let's jump into our next video.